Hi guys, welcome back to my studio. Today we're gonna dive into a project from the Armored Jet soundtrack, another one. This time it'll be De Cloak, the drum and bass track from the soundtrack. And so first I'm gonna play you the song and then we're gonna dive into the project, which I have to say is exactly how I left it, as with the other project. So it's gonna be a little bit of an exploration mission, trying to excavate some interesting facts about this um, particular song so uh yeah i've got the all the different versions here that i bounced previously and i'm gonna just uh play the final first so you get an idea of what it does So then it goes into the breakdown and there's a really cool moment. Actually, it's one of my favorite moments, so I'm going to play it. that I really like how it drops out into really something really thin because it's been busy and intense for a very long time and then it goes into this very minimal version of the theme so yeah as you can tell it's quite a complicated song um, it, it's a, a, a very high Im information density on the drop and it's also got a particular th vocal theme uh, if you've watched the other uh, video uh, about uh, wall hack, then I mentioned there that I tried to add a musical theme for every uh, every one of the Armageddon tracks, and this is the same thing. I, I the initial demo that I wrote for this didn't have the vocal; uh, it was just the drums and the bass. And then when I had that going, I, I decided to you know uh, add this signature uh, theme to it. So I'll, I'll play the the first demo that I bounced, which is this one. And this was, uh, I think, the last one of the uh, combat tracks that I had to deliver. And I, before I did this one, I didn't know that they were also open to actual drum and bass. So I'd done like electro, halftime, you know, all this, all the other stuff that you've already heard. Um, and when they were like, oh, but you can do some 172 as well. I was like, oh, okay, well, let's go. So I made this. <laughs> So this has got the main, you know, idea of the groove and the dynamics of the drop basically in there. But it has no musical theme and no intro, no outro or anything. Um, and it sounds... When I hear this back now, it sounds roughly the same as the final uh, mix. You know, the, the, it has the same effect the, the, when it drops. 
even though I spent a lot of time trying to get the drop to sound better because I was going for kind of an old school sound here with like breaks and sounds with more resonances and more lo-fi elements and not do a completely, you know, 2019 or whatever w w uh, production on it, uh, stay away from too many synthetic elements. But I did want it to sound big, of course. I, did, I, want, I didn't want it to sound old at the same time. I, I did want to use those elements. So I spent a lot of time in the mix kind of fighting the sounds that I started to use, which is a classical thing that happens if you use old breaks and, and like production style from back in the day, trying to clean things up. That's a, that's a whole process that you end up doing, which with way more modern production, if you're using really clean synths to begin with, you don't have that problem. Um, so it's an, it's an interesting battle. And I, I have to say with this song, I don't feel like I completely got there. With many songs, I, you know, at some point just sort of stop working on them. You, you, you abandon them because you can't find any more faults in them or you're just, you're, you're out of energy to work on them. But there's always, there's always something you can say that you wish you had di done differently. For some songs, less so. For some songs, more. But this one definitely has its moments where I wish I could have fixed it, but I tried a million times and didn't really get further. And I'm happy with the song, but like, I still wish I could have somehow it, I didn't get, yeah, I, I think, you know what I'm trying to say. I didn't fully, I'm not fully satisfied. I am very proud of the song because there's a lot of uh, elements in there that I'm proud of, especially the vocal theme, which was, uh, like I said in the previous video was kind of, um, around the same time I was trying to learn a little bit about harmony theory and stuff like that. So we'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, this one was a tough one to do right. So let's get into the project. So here it is. And as you can see, it's a lot of channels and a lot of channels with no names. So there's a bunch of stuff here, a lot of empty tracks too. And a whole bunch of other stuff, other stuff, other stuff, other stuff, other stuff. So basically it's a mess. But that's, you know, in my, in my last video, I think I said something along the lines of I am not entirely disorganized, um, but I'm also not very organized. I wish I could continue that argument now, but I think with this project, this is pretty messy. So um, let's get into the main elements of the song. So basically the intro is more or less a, a sublimination or like a, a minimization of, of the main groove and the drums. So that's not really a key part of the song. Um, there is a vocal theme already that starts at uh, nine bar. Actually, no, this is a microtonal little thing that starts here, which I think is might be cool to highlight uh, if I can find it. Uh, this guy. Now, this is a very subtle sound, but we might as well start with this sound here. Uh, this was made with Pianotech, and Pianotech is a, a, a piano simulator, so it, it's not a sample-based uh, piano. It actually generates it on, uh, uh, based on physical modeling. And that means you can tune everything differently and just do crazy things with it. And one of the things you can do is load different uh, tuning files in there. Actually, you can create your own tuning files with a really cool circular diagram. And this is one of the things coming out of there. The note that it's playing is not really in key. It's just out of it and it gives it this really cool tension when it's played in the mix or even when it's played within itself because there's an interval in the sample. Like that one, that, ah, that one is not really in key. I forgot whether it's sharp or, or flat, and um, my hearing's not good enough to tell you that right off the bat. But um, yeah, in the mix, it gives it gives it a cool tension. And it's subtle, but it actually is a lot cooler than if it were tuned properly. So that's one of the cool elements it starts with. Then we have, then I think here, we're introducing the vocal theme. So that's a simplification of the lead line of the vocal. It's very pretty. 
um, but also, you know, pretty basic. Uh, unfortunately, I had to bounce a lot of elements because this was getting a uh, turning into a real CPU hog. So I needed a lot of things you'll find will be audio files, unfortunately. Um, and this builds up to be. Uh, let's let's mute some the bass and drums for a second so we can hear what it is all doing. So this kick stuff, and I think this is the break running. Yeah, let's mute that guy too. And then there's some bass stuff. We're gonna mute that too. My side chain's still going. Let's turn that off. So yeah, this part, this music. That's cool. I I think that's maybe even a little bit cooler than with drums in places. Anyway, so I tried to make a transition from basically just the lead of the vocal to the full uh, vocal theme that comes in at 33, which is this stuff, which has way more harmonic content. Um, so I added a pizzicato string that plays the chords and sort of swells in. It's this guy. I think that's just a contact. Oh yeah, it's the Albion library. Really nice strings in there. So this filters up and has some OTT on it. But yeah, so this here's the MIDI. This is following some chords that the that these the the, the final theme will have, but it's just arpeggiating them so you get a sense of sense of those chords without them being overpowering. And there's a string that I think I played, the SV1 string, that's uh, this guy over here has a great synth a string sound that I've probably talked about at length already, uh, probably in the last video too. It just is a cool string sound. I, I think I recorded it, and that would be this. Fading in very slowly. Right, yeah. So there, that's another layer to the theme, uh, and then the high vocals playing, and what else happens? There's obviously the shaker and some noises and some reverse effects, cymbal swell, and then there's a little effect here, a little bass drop, and a... That's a yeah, very basic, like that's, this is the most cliche thing ever. But you know, sometimes you need that stuff. And this is a, well, the sound is called FM8 Stereo Square mm, Swell. Like this is just the sound I once made in, in probably made a million of in, in FM8. It's just this FM, dirty FM swell. And then we get into the theme, like opening up massively here. So I'll have to turn all this stuff on to get it to sound right. Uh, that doesn't matter, but I'll mute it anyway. So yeah, there's a simple bass stab, some noise, and so yeah, let's get into that now. So, um, yeah, this is part, like I'll show you the different parts to this theme. This is the, the, a good way to start because this is the MIDI for it. I think you can, you'll be able to see that uh, these chords, I think these chords really want to solve to F, but they don't. Uh, th there's no F chord in here, uh, F minor, but this constantly has a real maximal tension to resolve to F. And the sort of bass hit on the one that done done that's an F and that sort of resolves it. Um, but I wanted to make the point even more clearly at the very end of the song where it actually does resolve to F and then you get the full sort of harmonic thing. But here I really wanted to keep this that tension. So I think this is the six chord here, and then we have a seven chord there. Is that the six chord? Seven chord. 
this is the this is the one that wants to solve to f most dramatically. Um, I think I could play it. Uh, I don't know if you guys will hear it. Actually, yeah, no. Um, and I think this guy is this. Yeah, it goes back to the sixth chord. So it sort of sits around the sixth and the uh, seventh step, the uh, dominant major chord, which is this one. Uh, so let me play you what happens when it does sort of resolve, and you get this. Ta-da! See, I mean, that would be too cliche to do it, or it, 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 ha it completely resolves, so you lose all the tension if you do that somewhere in the middle of the song. Well, I guess you could, but uh, yeah, I wanted to put that at the very end.